welcome, welcome to the Good Monsters Podcast. My name is Cody Lawrence, and I caught COVID. Yep, that's right. And I am still alive. I am still speaking. I am still functioning. And uh, aside from some things that I'll explain to you here in a bit, uh, everything's fine. Not not really anything uh, worth worrying about. It's not that bad. <laughs> Not that bad. Uh, first, I would like you to go to YouTube right now and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just look up Good Monsters. You'll see the snake logo. Um, you can find it in there somewhere. But also uh, follow me on Instagram. I have uh, my all of my social media links in my Instagram. And... Uh, that will really help me out. I'm going to start posting a lot more YouTube videos, a lot more short videos. Uh, up until this point, I've pretty much only been posting podcasts. So go follow my YouTube channel and uh, expect more content to come. So anyway, uh, I have COVID. I wanted to dedicate this episode to talking about my particular symptoms. Uh, I just got it sometime last week. I tested positive a few days ago after uh, feeling a little lousy for a couple of days or like, you know, having a cough and, and whatever. So I decided to get tested and I was positive. And so I wanted to talk about what COVID looks like for me. Uh, I recognize that it looks different for a lot of people, but this is hopefully going to be encouraging. Uh, plus, if you're, if you're curious just about it, like if you haven't had it or if a lot of people in your life have had it, maybe... Uh, I I bet I would wager that their experience is similar to mine, which is it's not a big deal. Now, I bet also there are some people who um, have this or who uh, who COVID is affecting very badly. A lot like flus, you know, people die from the flu every year and people die from this. People die from a lot of things, but it seems like and uh, scientifically speaking. I, I, I hate using the term scientifically because it's misused nowadays. Anyway, according to what we see, COVID is not killing a lot of people and it never was. Uh, relatively, it's not killing a lot of people. And uh, I think this is all being way overblown and it's not just due to my own experience. It's due to uh, just what I see in the world. Uh, this isn't as bad as the media is making it out to be. The media is a total joke and it's making people afraid so that they watch uh, the they watch CNN more to, to, to let them know whenever it's safe to go outside. This is closing down churches. It's making Christians afraid. And I mean, honestly, that's the worst part because Jesus himself, uh, one of the phrases he said the most and one of the phrases that's repeated the most throughout the entire Bible is do not be afraid. And I think a lot of Christians are giving into this fear, so hopefully this can help you be a little less afraid. Uh, so let me explain what happened to me. I just felt, like I said, a little lousy, um, so I thought, you know, I might as well get tested because I'm curious. Part of me even wanted, uh, well, <laughs> I wouldn't say part of me wanted to get COVID, but yeah, I'd say that. I'd say that's accurate. Yeah, part of me was like, you know, just give it to me already so this can be over with. And... Uh, well, look at that. I got it. Uh, I was being safe. I was socially distancing from most people except for, you know, friends. And uh, like when I was out in a grocery store, I wouldn't stand up on people's back. But yeah, I would hang out with friends and um, I would live my life exactly like I normally would. And oh, look at that. I got sick like people do. <laughs> and it's totally fine. Um, so I had little bit of a headache, felt a little tired, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to get tested because if I'm positive, this is awesome because that means I don't have to be vaccinated. Uh, and I know, I know people say, well, you, you might need, the, you, you might catch it again, even if you've caught it in the past. But think about this. If you have it, so typically your body builds up an immunity to whatever sickness you have, but if a sickness mutates, then you can get that same sickness again. Or if your body didn't build up an immunity the first time, then you can still get the sickness again, okay? That makes sense. But if the disease mutates, 
or if your body doesn't build up an immunity, which is exactly what a vaccine tries to do, but if it's your body's fault and it doesn't build up an immunity, then the vaccine's not going to matter. And on top of that, if, um, if the disease mutates, then again, the vaccine isn't going to matter. So uh, I think it's entirely reasonable and scientific, by the way, to believe that you don't need to take the vaccine if you've gotten COVID. So I'm not going to take the vaccine. And I was anticipating, I was excited to see that that test result was positive because that meant, great, look, I have even less reason to be afraid of this. Now I can finally be even more free knowing that, look, I have this. I don't need to be afraid of, not, not myself. I wasn't afraid of myself getting it. But look, like I can go around anybody I want to unless they're cowards. I can go around anybody I want to and not spread it to them. But you might also say, well, you can spread COVID even if you don't have it or even if you're not showing symptoms. Okay, dummy, listen to this. If somebody coughs on me, if, if I have COVID or if I'm immune, look, if I have antibodies and somebody coughs on me, it's not like I have an aura of COVID floating around me for the rest of the day. Let's say the, the, the sickness, the virus, is in droplets in the liquid that comes out of their cough and lands on my coat. If nobody is licking my coat, then they're safe, right? So, uh... Yeah, I don't anticipate anybody licking my coat. Um, so I think I'm safe from not spreading it to people. So anyway, here were my symptoms. I was kind of stuffy, had a headache, a little tired, decided to get a test. Decided, uh, turned out, turns out that it was positive, And so I stayed home and I started getting some aches and some stiffness. It wasn't that bad until I ended up getting, man, some of the worst back pain I've ever felt in my life. That was bad. That was probably the worst part for me. It was horrible back pain. I thought it was my kidneys at first because I took some uh, some pain pills because I was hurting a little bit, but then it got worse. So whatever it was could like power through pain pills, <laughs> which made me not want to take them because I thought for some reason my kidneys were reacting to them because it, it was like right in my lower mid back area. And man, it was on fire. I was like rolling around in pain. <laughs> and then eventually I'm like, you know what? Uh, well, I did I did research and it turns out that whatever kind of, it's like Tylenol or aspirin or, or whatever, one of them targets your, or like is processed through your liver and the other one is processed through your kidneys. And the one that I took, I was like, oh, you know what? Let's try the one that's processed through your liver. I don't remember which one I took first. It doesn't really matter. But the pain went away. So if you ever get it and you have aches and pains, all you have to do is take pain pills. And well, at least it helped me. So that, that felt fine. I put some hot, like a compress on my back and, and that made it feel better. But it did hurt and it was really bad for a couple of days. Uh, don't recommend it. <laughs> well, you know what? That's, that's a lie. I do recommend it. I recommend not being afraid of COVID, getting COVID and uh, living your life, you know, live your life. Don't be afraid. Uh, so after the bad aches, the loss of smell and taste came. Now this doesn't happen to everybody, uh, but it it's happening to me right now. I cannot smell or taste anything, not a thing. I can taste the most basic of, I guess you can call them tastes. I can taste when something is sweet and spicy, like I can feel the burn in my mouth from spicy food. I can taste um, savory stuff and salty, but I can't taste the thing itself. So like I could not tell you if I was eating chicken or beef other than the texture. Every, no taste at all minus I can tell when I'm eating something savory, salty, sweet, whatever. Um, so I've found that I enjoy foods with more complex flavors. So like if there's something savory with a sweet sauce that's also salty, that's the most enjoyable thing for me to eat right now. And I'm okay with that. I, I think honestly, this is making me experience food and still be able to enjoy food in a different way than I normally would. Because normally food is enjoyable based on how it tastes. But now I can 
find enjoyment in food based on how it feels. And I think once I recover my taste and smell, I will enjoy food even more because I have this experience of knowing and being able to appreciate how food feels. I can then enjoy how it feels and tastes once I get my taste back. So really, I am excited. I'm excited to get my taste back because I'll be able to enjoy food even more than I did before I had COVID. So also, it's been a little hard to wake up in the mornings. It seems like no matter how long I sleep, even if it's over eight hours, my eyes feel like feel like they're glued shut. Um, it's not it's not like a lethargic feeling necessarily. It's just like I need more sleep in the mornings, and it's really hard to open my eyes. But once I get going and maybe splash some water on my face and get my eyes working a little bit, then it's fine. You know, after 30 minutes, that goes away and it's not a big deal. As you can probably tell, I'm still stuffy. So that has persisted. The stuffiness is, um, it's more consistent than the stuffiness that I've probably ever felt in the past. And it's lasted a little longer, just a few days now at this point. Um, yeah, and that's it. Look, right now I'm a little stuffy. Every now and then I have minor, minor aches. Um, it's kind of hard to wake up. That is what I'm currently experiencing, and honestly, it's not a big deal. This is not something I would have gone to the hospital for. This is not um, anything that I thought would be anything other than a minor cold, other than the loss of taste and smell. That's kind of a bummer. But you can lose your taste and smell with sinus infections. You can lose your taste and smell with... um, with certain kinds of colds and flus. So this is not that out of the ordinary. But definitely the the taste and the smell thing is what I miss the most. And the aches and pains were the worst part. But look, right now it just feels like I have kind of a cold. Not a big deal at all. So here's the encouragement. For those of you listening, if you have not gotten COVID, I'd say do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of the sickness Do not be afraid based on what um, the media tells you because, look, you could die from any illness at any time. Now, this might make you more afraid, but I don't think that's the response that you should have to this. You can die from the flu. You could have, look, there was a a young man that I went to high school with who I was running the mile uh, in PE class one day in high school, and one of the students collapsed on the field. And he went into a coma and he never woke up and he passed away a week or two later. And it was devastating. But the fact is he was young, you know, he was like 16 or 17 years old. And um, he, it turns out he had an undiagnosed heart condition and he just died. So the point is, look, our lives are a mist. We can die at any time. And we need to enjoy the life we have while we have it. I heard a quote earlier today, and I think I um, I want to repeat it, and I think I, I agree with this quote too, and it kind of sums up my perception on COVID really, really well. So I want to repeat it to you. Uh, I'd rather die from COVID than live in fear of COVID. I would rather die of COVID than live in fear of COVID. Yeah, because we're supposed to live our lives, and what our government... Uh, peace be upon them, (laughs) is telling us, and uh, the media is telling us to be afraid that this is horrible, that we need to give up our freedoms and give more power to the government to rule us because we don't know how to rule ourselves. But the truth is, for the entirety of human history, adults have taken care of themselves. We don't, as adults, need other adults who know less than us about our own lives and our own livelihood and well-being to tell us how to live. And th- this, like I mentioned earlier, this, um, it, I mean, it's, it's idiocy. It is absolutely asinine, the things that people are attributing to science, because it's changing. Science, if it's properly measured and properly observed, does not change. Does anybody remember when the CDC said that COVID cannot transfer from human to human back on early in the pandemic? Well, that wasn't good science. It changed, obviously. So why are we listening to these people? It's changing. They're constantly changing what they what they want us to do. 
uh, initially it was, it, the rule was like two weeks, you know, wear a mask for two weeks, shut down businesses for two weeks and everything's going to be fine. Oh, but then it changed. Two weeks later, uh, yeah, let's flatten the curve. Once the curve is flattened, then, then everything's going to be fine. Well, look, the curve was flattened a long time ago. So what happened to that? Then it was, well, we have to wait until the vaccine comes out, and then everything's going to be fine. Well, look, the vaccine is out. People are getting the vaccine, and there's no end in sight of this. In Kansas City, where I'm at, the mayor months ago uh, had so had this stay at home order, which, as far as I know, is still in effect, and uh, it was extended a few months after he he initiated the the stay at home order, and then the second time it was extended, it was extended indefinitely, which means there there was no end announced. This order for people to stay at home, well, I mean, which nobody's really following anyway. I still see a thousand people at Walmart every time I go there. And by the way, I still go there. I still go and live my life and shop and I act like everything's normal except for wearing a mask sometimes. And I'm not even sure I should be doing that because of the people who are behind this so-called science that's changing all the time. So for a lot of places, these stay-at-home orders are indefinite. There's no end in sight to this. And not only that, but the government honestly has no right to tell us how to live our private and personal lives. We can take care of ourselves. This is now something that is political. It is not scientific. If it were scientific, it would not be constantly changing. Not only that, but think for a moment about what science is. Science is an observation of reality, right? And if we observe reality, all we get is measurements. We get observations. We, we can figure out exactly how many people are dying from COVID. Uh, we can figure out how it spreads. That is the thing that science tells us. Science cannot tell us to do anything with that data. That is up to humans. So when somebody says, well, scientifically, you need to stay home. No, scientifically, you don't need to do anything because science tells us what is, not what ought to be. The politicians who are using science for their own uh, plans, whatever those are, are the people who are telling us what ought to be in the name of science. And science can't do that. We observe what happens with science and then people tell us what we ought to do. And look, who knows more about your life and what you ought to be doing? People in office or yourself? Well, obviously it's yourself. Um, science cannot tell us our reaction. It can only tell us facts. And we are allowing people to tell us what to do with our lives based on... You know, it's like saying the sky is blue, therefore you should stay home. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And we're giving into this. And it's terrible. Um, look, I have COVID. I'm definitely not feeling 100%, but I am feeling like physically, <laughs> but I am feeling over the moon. Just because I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have anything to be afraid of. Look, I am living as a free person and it is awesome. And I hope you'll do the same.